overflows. The language of love. Insights into life, love and light. Unlike other books by Nivedita, these three books, Life, Love and Light, Light onto Myself and Life of Bliss are part of her Tantra series. It has been spoken, happened in a totally different medium. It is like out of reverence and love, the disciple sits around the master and the communion begins. The entire style of communication, communion is Tantra. The language is of a different type. You must know something about it before we enter into it. All the Tantra treaties are dialogues between Shiva and Devi. These are not written, instead spoken. Devi questions and Shiva answers. All the Tantra treaties start that way. Why? Why this method? It is very significant. It is not a dialogue between teacher and the disciple. Instead, it is a dialogue between two lovers. And Tantra signifies through it a very meaningful thing. Remember, the deeper teachings cannot be given unless there is a love between the two, the disciple and the master. The disciple and the master must become deep lovers. Only then can the higher, the beyond be expressed. As a result for these three books, the author used the language of love and tantra style. The entire book has happened in the language of love. So it is a language of love, for the disciple must be in an attitude of love. But not only this, because friends can be lover as well. Tantra says a disciple moves as receptivity. As a result, the disciple must be in a feminine receptivity. Only then is something possible. You need not be a woman to be a disciple, but you need to be in, an, in a feminine attitude of receptivity. There is a difference between a female and the feminine attitude of receptivity, which Nivedita, the author, when Nivedita, the author, asks, it means the feminine attitude asks. Why this emphasis on the feminine attitude? Men and women are not only physically different, instead they are psychologically different as well. Sex is not the only difference in the body. It is a difference in psychologies as well. A feminine mind means receptivity, total receptivity, surrender and love. A disciple needs a feminine psychology, otherwise he will not be able to learn. You can ask, but if you are not open, then you cannot be answered. You can ask a question and still remain closed. Then the answer cannot penetrate you, cannot reach the deepest core. Your doors are closed, you are dead, you are not open. This does not mean, this does not matter if the disciple is a male or a female. What is really significant is the feminine receptivity asking the question with total trust. Therefore, the language of the entire communion is love. The author was 
indeed open and receptive. The questions she asked were out of trust and surrender. It was as if the formless state of the author was asking the questions. No question was to gain any knowledge. Instead, each question was aimed at more clarity and transformation. A feminine receptivity means a womb-like receptivity in the inner depth. Only in such receptivity you can receive. And not only that, much more is implied. A woman is not only receiving something. The moment she receives, it becomes a part of her body. A child is received, a woman conceives. The moment there is conception, the child has become part of her feminine body. It is not alien. It is not foreign. It has been absorbed. Now the child will not be something added to the mother. Instead, just a part, just as the mother. And the child is not only received, the feminine body becomes creative. The child begins to grow within the womb. A disciple needs a womb-like receptivity. Whenever whatsoever is received is not to be gathered as dead knowledge. It must grow in you like the fetus grows in mother's womb. It must become blood and bones in you. It must become a part now. It must grow. This growth will change you, will transform you. The receiver, the author being a female, it was so spontaneous and natural for her to absorb what is communed to her. That is why for these three books a Tantra approach was used. Each book starts with Nivedita asking a question and Tao replying to her. Though both the author and the master were present in their physical forms, but the communion happened through their formless presence. This communion happened in their formless existence. Now, even the modern psychology, the depth psychology, particularly says that man is both man and woman. No one is just male and no one is just female. Everyone is biosexual because sex, both sexes are present in each one of us. This is the very recent research in the West. But for the East, this has been one of the most basic concepts for thousands of years. You must have seen pictures of Shiva as half male, half female. There is no other concept like this in the entire human history. Shiva is depicted as half man, half woman. The question arises on the inner horizon of the author. Her male aspect responds with her feminine part. The, her male aspect responds while her feminine part receives the answer and immediately gets absorbed in the author. This is the reason that her life was transformed after these books were finished. There is yet another side of it. The author asks the questions, the feminine side of Tao absorbs the questions and the response comes from his masculine side. As a result of this deep approach, 
the author manifests total trust and surrender because the author is asking the questions so lovingly without any fear or anything and the response is also so profound as the master is responding to himself that is why each response is so profound it can be said in the language of tantra the author is not just a concert instead she is the other half and unless a disciple becomes the other half of the master it is impossible to convey higher teachings the esoteric methods when you become one then there is no doubt no fear and the two are not separate from one another when you are one with the master so totally one so deeply one there is no argument no logic and no reason one simply absorbs one becomes a womb and then the teaching begins to grow in you like the fetus grows in mother's womb and transforms you love language is totally different i am not concerned with my ego i am concerned with you i am not concerned to prove something to strengthen my ego i am concerned to help you it is a compassion to help you to grow evolve and blossom to your full potential to help you to transform to help you to be reborn remember logic will always be intellectual concepts and principles will be significant arguments too will be significant with love language what is said is not significant rather it is the way it is said is important the container the and the words are not important the content the message the energy field is more important it is a heart to heart communion not a mind to mind discussion it is not a debate it is a communion so it is rare sitting facing each other in a loving devotion the communion began it is a love dialogue no conflict it is as if tau is speaking to himself and nivedita is listening to herself why this emphasis is on love love language because you are in love with your master then whole gestalt changes this becomes different then you are not hearing the words then you are not then you are drinking him words are fluid like they are magical they are intoxicating and you are drinking them then words are irrelevant really the silence between the words become more significant what he is saying may be meaningful or it may not be meaningful but it is his eyes his gestures his compassion his love understand thus understand the love language i am speaking about a silent communion not the love that you understand by the word that is why transformation happens